couple of families. In my family, we cry. It doesn't bother us, it shouldn't bother you. And I'm also thinking Academy Awards, 1942. <laughs> Best movie, Mrs. there. Best actress, Gary Garson. She talked so long that the next year they changed the rules. <laughs> related to retirement speeches. <laughs> I, I walked around the park lots today at lunchtime trying to think of what to say to you all. To express what a pleasure, what a gift it has been to work with all of you for so many years. I'm, I'm, I, I want to thank the folks who spoke. I want to thank my boss, Karen Marigel. I feel so grateful that I started, I had the best bosses in the world here at PSU. And Lord knows, if I had a hard time keeping my job. <laughs> Charlie White, down in Atlanta, Georgia, right now. Sherwin Davidson, my buddy and wonderful boss in my years of extended studies. Karen Marigel, Bob Vieira, who I worked for. And you know what? You were up here, and I'm thinking, I worked for you when you were in student affairs. <laughs> and you know what? I worked for you. You. <laughs> a lot of fishing. <laughs> and I was just thinking, you organized my last retirement for Oregon State, and I kind of left. Kind of left. Marvin Kaiser. I don't, I'm not sure if Marvin's here. I wanted to ask him a a Catholic mass question. <laughs> Somebody else. But, but across that, I did have one boss at PSU that I didn't get along with, who actually didn't like me. And that was my boss at the Candy County. Smith Center <laughs> Candy County. Who I discovered later, she wanted to get rid of me because she wanted to hire Tess over. <laughs> <laughs> and frankly, who could blame her? <laughs> Once I learned that, I felt it was going to But that was the only one. Nancy Goldman, who's here. I'm thinking about my summer session buddies. Right. Nancy Goldman, Maggie, Steve Harmon. If there's anyone else. Uh, what, a, what a gift to be saved from the candy counter. <laughs> and fall into this group that shared values, shared the love of what we did, and shared a horrible sense of humor. <laughs> but, and we worked for a boss who was, you know, you couldn't have asked for a more wonderful person. And I sort of feel like those kinds of things can happen once in your career and you're grateful. Yeah. I've had it happen so many times and I feel like I've bookended with my current boss, Karen, with all my co-workers in the dean office, with a group of advisors who I love with all my heart, Laura and the gang. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm to think, and if, if there's anybody who's had more recent Catholic mass experience than <laughs> there used to be a part of the Catholic, there probably still is, part of the Catholic mass, which I think might be called the canon or might be called the litany or something like that. It was really, really, really long. <laughs> and then 
Second Vatican II happened in about 1962 or three. And they suddenly gave you three options. There was the War and Peace version. <laughs> there was the Reader's Digest for Dance version. And then it was kind of a good one. But it started the same. So whether I was kneeling down, the little altar boy that I was, or sitting in a pew, I, the priest would start that part, and I'd be sitting there for the only person actually. <laughs> 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 and at a certain point, you would hit a word, and you knew which way it was going. <laughs> right. yeah. And so we'd get to a certain point, like the time, because I wouldn't have said the yeah, answer. <laughs> this might be the point in this talk when you should be going. Sorry. There are so many of you that I, I want to thank. I, I want to just give some examples. I, I, I know Rod Dunham is here. Rod, I don't believe Rod was ever my boss, officially. But if there was anyone who was a mentor, an inspiration, somebody who never forgot what was important, and what was important was the work we did with students. I can't pretend that I emulated him, but I sure was inspired by him. I want to talk about, uh, you know, I, my years of working with Vieira. What he didn't tell you about our haircut trips was our friend, dear friend Mark, who's now passed away, we had a deal with Art that he had to tell us when our hair had become a comb over. <laughs> <laughs> And we were pretty close for a number of years. And the deal was, Art had to say, it's hot. And then when I met Jim, and he started going to Art, same deal. Jim was the first one where I said, you got to tell him, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> and, I said, no, <laughs> and then Abby, called Art and said, for God's sake, what are you going to tell him? Tell him. So those are, those are the kind of uh, stories that I, I, I want to, you know, I, I want to mention, a, well, part of that canon has this litany of saints. I still remember the part of Linus, Linus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> This, I have a litany of saints at the issue who are up there in the stratosphere for me. I, my friends from degree requirements. <laughs> Angie, Pam, Victoria, the crowd, God, I love you. And if you ever go state's evidence on me, I'll be visiting me at the big house. Nita Kindle, who tells stories so beautifully that I can aspire to, to be civil. I think I'm going to mention, you know, I got my master's degree here, and I went to school with some really wonderful people. And I was so grateful to the faculty and my friend Nancy Pichotto. Not only did we get to go to school together, we got to work together in the old campus living room, student advising center. One of my favorite stories about Nancy is that she was arguing with this guy who was maybe a little bit older than we were then. And she was telling him a rule and he didn't want to accept it. Finally, she looked back at my office and said, Hey, Mercer, this guy needs a white man in a tie with a tie on. I've been so fortunate in so many things. 
Larry Bolden is sitting here. What an inspiration and what a gift to be able to teach with him a few times over the years. And to really see, as I see with so many folks around here, what wonderful caring teaching can be. Um, I was telling somebody as I was standing in the hallway, scared to come in. <laughs> One at a time to turn into an interview. So, uh, <laughs> but I, I know that there's like Grace and Kate. So I, I want to I want to get to that really quick. My advising colleagues across the university. God, I this place, this place that, and the work we are involved in has been transformative for so many people. I am one. Okay. Give me a minute. Places <laughs> for in talking about a wall. And when she got bored holding my hand, she realized that as long as I was holding up to something, I could stand up. So she taught me to walk like this. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't learn the lesson. She didn't taught me how to ride a bike. And what that led to, unfortunately for her, an ambulatory little brother, I proceeded to start following her. In an incredibly annoying way. <laughs> Sometimes not so successfully, I used to try and follow her to friend Katie Drake's house in the hope that they would let me play that mystery date board game. Because <laughs> I kind of had a crush on the boy. <laughs> that, never, that never worked out. <laughs> well, what did work out was I followed her to Charlie White's uh, English history class. And then I followed her in the graduate program in English. <coughs> and that has made all the difference. I'm going to close with one thing. I was home sick over the 4th of, or the 4th of July, Thanksgiving weekend. So I was binging, flipping channels between Harry Potter, Marathon, and Snapped. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I I heard a line which I used to my dear friend Paloma Harrison, who has had the misfortune of having the office next to me for about six years, who has to rush in every time I have any kind of a problem at all. I'll give you a little bit of an applause. In my office, we have created this fiction. The fiction is I am the boss and I give guidance. <laughs> the reality is, it's more like adult foster care. <laughs> <laughs> but I said this to my friend Paloma, but I don't think to mind because I think it's as true for the last thing. I didn't mention the last mile. It's gotten a lot of uh, it's been a wonderful program. And I just want to mention the folks who are part of that committee. Becky Ingersoll, Wade Vicinovich, Amanda Nguyen, Megan Looney, Marie Farello, Scott Broussard, Casey Campbell, Angie Pam, <coughs> the folks who get together and figure out all these convoluted things. What a pleasure it's been. So, I'm going to shut up. I'm about 21 hours into Harry Potter. <laughs> Some one of the characters said something, and it seems really appropriate for this group and for the people we share this world with. Wouldn't be Hogwarts without us. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs>